Hello, Orange. How are you? Oh, hey, Neff. All right. What you know good? <laughs> um, yeah, I just saw you were having a conversation. Didn't know, you know, we we have talks in the past. So I didn't know if you were interested in talking about stuff. Or... Yeah, sure I am. Um, I'm game for whatever you want. You know, my area of expertise is more geo based, but if you want to continue on what you were talking about, we can. Oh, I love geology. That's that's I'm, the, the yeah, I'm saying you don't need my the favorite subject. subject for me. That's all I'm saying. Oh, I, I get it. That's cool. Uh, but no, I'm the, I'm willing to talk about geology. All right. Um, I don't know. Last time we t- were talking about limestone. I don't know. I mean, you pick it. Your show. I just. You want to have a someone well, to talk I, to? I, I don't care. I think I, we we kind of covered that. I sure. pointed out that uh, you can't have fossils in limestone or chalk at the rate that uniformitarianists believe the material forms, which is one to two centimeters per thousand years, right? Uh, sure. Right, and no dead or no organism is going to fall dead on the ocean floor and sit there for a thousand years waiting to be buried by much less by, by numerous inches you know to for the material to become compacted enough to preserve the animal as a fossil you wouldn't have to have just enough to cover the thing you'd have to have multiple feet of that above it and then it become compressed and the water squeezed out of it so it becomes more like a solid rock solid so Neff, um that's a lot of deposition at one to two centimeters per thousand sure. Neff, what is the um I guess you'd say Noachian or creationist version of how limestone developed. Well, um, I, I, my best explanation, I guess, is the same way chalk does. Uh, chalk and limestone are comprised of pretty much the same thing, except the materials in limestone are not, you can't look at them under a microscope and see that it's, it's not predominantly preserved coccolithophores, right? It's more of like just calcium carbonate. Uh, well, they're uh, both calcium right. carbonate, yeah. Right. Uh, chalk's of, but, uh, but, but, when you, but when you look at chalk under a high magnification, you see these millions and millions of coccolithophores, right? And that's not what you observe when you look at chalk under high magnification, see? So um, I think uh, limestone is the same process, it's the same thing produced them, I, I accept uh, the bodies dis- disintegrated, possibly because of what stage during the flood they died. I believe that uh, chalk and limestone are both a product largely of uh, trillions upon trillions of coccolithophores, which died because the environment of the ocean changed rapidly. Uh, and uh, a, a lack of oxygen in the water possibly, but certainly a rapid change in temperature and possibly the induction of lots of minerals. So are, like arguably the beginning of the flood? Um, well, exactly what stage now, that I'm not sure about. What stage during the flood it would have been that limestone was created. I think limestone was probably a later flood s- sediment than, than, uh, than the, the chalk. Um, but so, uh, but I, I'm not sure about that. When when I hear that sentence, um, I, I'm trying to picture, you know, my, of course I don't believe Noah's flood happened. So I'm trying to picture if it did happen, what would the geology look like? And it kind of sounds like you would, in your example, like chalk would be a particular layer that is more or less dominant throughout the world. Every part of the world would have like. A line of chalk on it, essentially. Mm, Is that not wrong necess- in your mind? Not necessarily. I mean, uh, you know, uh, w- where were these giant plumes of uh, uh, of coccolithophores in the oceans when, and how would they exactly settle out? Uh, what tidal wave was occurring on the flu- that would have dragged it to this part of a? continent and then dumped it here but not over there i mean it's really hard to nail down exactly you know that sort of thing during the flood of Noah. but um, i think the evidence of the flood is overwhelming and, 
in well, the general sense. I, I'm no biologist, but uh, cocoa lithophore is kind of a, like a super common thing. I mean, I don't think they float around. They're like a plankton, right? I don't think they like float around in parties. Well, there, um, there, well, there's quadrillions of them in the ocean. Right. Yeah, but what you just said, like they have like a like a bed of them that would well, die. And chalk I, I is a global it thing. It's on it's massive chalk deposits are found on all the continents. So it would yeah, have been but they're not connected. Where, well, I mean, I'm, I'm just saying that the ocean and the environment of the oceans changed in such a way, and these coccolithophores had a narrow uh, living conditions, you know, limited sure. environment then if that's changed dramatically, it could have caused their demise and they die, lose their gases and sink, right? Okay. Like, you know, lose the carbon dioxide and oxygen in their quote unquote bodies, you know, and then no longer buoyant and they sink. So that's my take on it. Okay. Okay. Um, what would your response be to chalk at very different levels of the column? Like you have chalk down here, at like let's say um, pre Cretaceous, and then you have chalk higher, and let's say a Jurassic sediment. Well, I just would say it. Uh, you know, they died. I mean, I I don't know how to explain it except to say that it didn't all have to happen at once and only one one event. I mean, there, there could have been massive uh, uh, numbers of these creatures die in one part of the Earth and. and at, at one in one month, and then three months later, in a different part of the ocean, trillions, trillions, trillions more of them die, because the environment was changing. It, the flood's not something that happened instantaneously globally. Well, you know, I mean, it took, it, it took place. The waters what, prevailed on the Earth, according uh, the waters years, prevailed on the Earth for a year. Yes. And and uh, it rained for forty days and nights, but the flood was on the waters were on the earth for a year, and then they abated, and then no one and the animals remained on the ark for another year before disembarking. So that's so. Um, I guess to trans to try to carry this line of thought a bit, you're assuming that in that year, lots of other stuff happened, right? Um. During the, during the flood, it's yeah, so, you got your four days and four nights. All the mm -hmm. water comes, and then that well, year, that a lot of things flooded. happened. I believe slabs of the Earth's crust were shoved down into the mantle. I mean, you know, it was a cataclysmic event. There would have been earthquakes going on that absolutely dwarf any earthquake man has ever experienced. I mean, there's evidence for that. Well, uh, there, I, there so are, is that biblical evidence, or is that? No, right. geological evidence okay. of massive earthquakes. Uh, um, uh, for example, uh, er areas of, uh, of uh, sandstone which show uh, a jittering back and forth, and not just sandstone, other types of materials where the strata are literally zigzaggy, you know, and uh, ma materials. Like setting? No, no. Um, Look for a video. Um, I can't remember the name of it. Just search YouTube for videos of a man named Kurt Wise. I don't know if you know who he is. Um, he's a geologist. Uh, he's actually a paleontologist, but he's also studied geology. And uh, he describes, you can see some video um, where he ex describes these, these, phys these geologic formations that show Massive amounts of material moved at an incredibly rate, high rate of speed, uh, which would have resulted from an earthquake of absolutely gargantuan proportions. Yeah, there's uh, a I, I, lot of Kurt Wise videos. Um, if you find and you happen to shoot it to me on Twitter or comments or something, that'd probably be a lot more useful to me. Uh, yeah, I'm not gonna, okay. I, I don't want to watch right. 15 two hour long videos. Okay, so I, I don't, I don't, I guess I can't blame you for that. But um, so there would have been an awful lot of, uh, you know, uh, uh, catastrophic geological events, uh, things happening, uh, truly massive earthquakes and uh, changing temperatures in the oceans around the earth. 
which wouldn't have happened instantly, you know, it would have taken time for the um, change, you know, to occur. So how would, how would you be another. able to tell that these earthquakes happened during the flood as opposed to before or after? Because the sedimentary strata are deformed by it. And sedimentary yeah, strata are formed by, are, can only be bent if they're soft, moist materials, not if they're solid, cold rock. See, solid rock doesn't bend, it just breaks. So the materials had to be moist, like soft mud, in order to have been deformed like that by a cataclysmic earthquake. Because do we have floods nowadays doing this? Mm, like, I mean, I, I don't know of any flood that happens to have corresponded with a massive earthquake. Well, I'm sure. Times. I imagine they would be someplace, but I guess I don't know any off the top of my head either. Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't know no. of such a thing. Because I'm, I'm, I'm trying to find. I'm trying. I mean, sure, in your head it may work, but do we have an example of this process where an earthquake happens on flooded material, and then after the earthquake, we have these bent layers? That's kind of what I'm looking for, you know. Yeah. Well, um, if you um, like, I say you can see the physical evidence if you look for it. You'll have to look to find it. But um, and, and uh, you know. Cataclysmic uh, in, in evidence, it's just everywhere. I mean, drop stones, how do you explain large drop stones sealed in sedimentary in the strata unless those strata were soft, moist materials? Like conglomerate drop. or? No, drop stone. You know what a drop stone is? Um, I can Google it real quick. Take a quick uh, I thought you had a degree in geology. I do, but I did not study every particular sedimentary event that could ever happen. Okay, a dropstone is a rock yeah. that's been frozen in place and set. I'll show you. Oh, okay, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll show you one. Uh, I've, I've got something I can put on screen. Hopefully. Yeah, you have an in, you have a, a big stone in a, la in a layer, yes. Yeah, I'll show you some. I, I want people to see what it is I'm talking about. So, so you're wondering how you can get this big isolated rock and say a sandstone or shale deposit? Well, in, in, in various ones. Um, so here, I'm going to sh screen share some drop stones. Here. Now, uh, so this is a drop stone. That's a quartz height block that weighs, I don't know, a couple of tons, two, three tons maybe. And you can see the strata are deformed around it. The weight yes. of the stone is actually bent the strata to blow it because it was soft material. Um, here's another drop stone, and this again the sedimentary strata deform around it. Uh, that one, um, I'm not sure how heavy that one is. It's pretty big. I believe that one's a couple of tons also. And um, here's a drop stone that's much smaller. I think there's uh, somebody put something in the picture to give you an indication of size. There's a hammer, uh, a lightweight, it's pretty big hammer. stone. Yeah, it's pretty big. big. I'd say it weighs several hundred, maybe a thousand, twelve hundred, fifteen hundred pounds, something like that. It's hard to say, but um, uh, yeah, that's a drop stone there, and it's sealed in sedimentary strata, and the strata are deformed around it, especially right here. You can see on the left so side. So your contention is drop stones would only Here's, be the result of a large flooding environment? These these are also drop stones. Well, it, they would have to be because this means all the strata in that entire formation were soft, moist materials. And that drop stone got fixed in place. There's so no drop stone. Why would so that's that's again patrol uh Sedimentary rocks isn't exactly my specialty, although I'm familiar with them. Um, why would you, for example, have these drop stones be as rare as they are then? Well, I don't what, think what they're that rare. Very uh, here's, a, here's a whole bunch of small ones uh, in, in some well, yeah. sedimentary Well, that strata. looks like a conglomerate to me. But, well, but each one of those is a drop stone. though. Well, yeah, but there's a difference between a drop stone and a conglomerate, right? Here's some more drop stones. And this this one really just blows my mind. Somebody put a coin in the in the top. There's a coin right there. Yeah, for, it's very pretty. Size. The, um, well, this is a drop stone, and you can see its weight deformed the strata into which it fell. This material had to be very soft, like Play-Doh. Sure. For that, for that to happen. So these strata were formed rapidly by moving water, and they were soft and moist material, all of this. 
See this material oh, down I here at the now. bottom. My contention. Hold on, let me, almost. Let me. Almost done. Hold on. Okay. This strata at the bottom of the picture, you see, they're deformed also because they were soft and moist, and all the strata above, even the top one at the top, was also soft and moist. This whole formation was soft, moist material when that rock was frozen into space. And you can see how this is deformed, these, these parabolic recumbent folds right here. This means the material was still flowing when that rock was frozen in place because this flow of material ran into the rock and had nowhere to go but to bend back upon itself because it met resistance when it ran into the rock. This whole formation was soft sedimentary material. I I'm not questioning the softness of the initial deposit when the drop stone was dropped in place, right? Um, my what I'm wondering about, if you could provide a better answer, is why is this the result of a global flood and not an individual thing that happened in this particular sandstone deposit? Why because we find this kind of thing globally. Yes, but but all, strata. all these different places can have floods over time, right? Because my position is each sandstone represents its own unique environment. And you can problem, definitely find sandstones that don't have these things in them. The problem is that the entire geologic column, as it's called, is comprised of sedimentary strata. Well, it's comprised and, of lots of different strata. not Well, lots of different sedimentary rocks, strata. Not just sedimentary. Well, I mean, there are non there's there's uh, there's uh, lithograph uh, met uh, metamorphic rock, and there's yeah. uh, sure, but I mean, the the geologic column isn't comprised predominantly of that kind of material. It's predominantly well, it sedimentary. Off. You go up no, to no, the I'm talking about globally. And you're lots of metamorphics. I'm talking about globally as a whole. The geologic column bound to the Precambrian is sedimentary material, sedimentary strata. Well, how it down. it's interrupted by lots of different kinds of things, yes. But those things are in the sedimentary materials of the Earth. Right? So the Earth is covered with an average of 1,800 meters. That's an average. It's six miles of it in some places. Other places, virtually none, like the Canadian Shield. But, but the average is 1,800 meters to a mile of sedimentary strata that go all the way down from the surface of the ground where you're standing to a mile down is comprised largely of sedimentary strata. And so it, it's irrational, I think, to believe that sedimentary strata formed rapidly of the massive, uh, massive formations of sedimentary material would have formed by massive amounts of moving water over here, but not over there or over there. Wait, well, how, is, how, is that a bad, how is that a bad explanation? That you have lots of, you have sedimentary formations form here where there's a reason for it to build a lake, a river, dune, what have you, but you don't have it over there where there's like, say, not a lake, river, dune, there's just a forest and there's not deposition. Why, because why is that an issue? You're trying to define the whole geologic column by the exceptions to it, not the column itself. That's the problem. Could you expand on that, please? I don't. I don't. That doesn't follow. Me. I, well, I've already explained it. The geologic column is comprised, it. is comprised largely of sedimentary strata globally. Okay, there's other materials in there, but the predominant material of the whole continental crust of every continent is sedimentary strata. Okay, with you've got rock formations that have bowed up into the sediments, right? Come up from in, from from deeper in the crust, you know, because of I events. I'm going to say cataclysmic events that caused intrusions into the sedimentary strata, and would have been pushed up into it as the strata was being deposited during the flood. You would have had those kinds of events too, because the crust was being reshaped. Materials coming up out of the earth towards the surface and in some places it's being shoved down from the edge of one continental plate down into the earth and others so but but i'm the, the point i'm making is it, it sedimentary strata are produced by water moving water rapidly moving water that's what makes sedimentary strata so wherever we find sedimentary strata we're looking at material that was deposited by rapidly moving water well Shale is, everywhere. Shale isn't deposited. You saying shales are deposited by rapidly moving water? Why wouldn't it be? 
Well, rapidly moving water, for example, would be a riverbed. And rivers have tumbling rocks and stuff like that. So when you look at a riverbed, you find all these little pieces in there that you don't necessarily find in a shale. So why would a why would a shale be the shale. positive opening water as opposed to say conglomerate or a brescia or something like that? Shale is sedimentary rock. I know it's sedimentary rock, but okay. it's not rapidly moving sedimentary rock. Well, it looks, it looks much more why, like why would it, it looks much more like the bottom of a lake. Why would it be the an bottom exception? of a, the Mississippi? Well, why would it be an exception when you're going to find why shale layers? Shale is found in between sedimentary other types of sedimentary strata. It's not like shale exists only in one place in the geologic column. I didn't say it did. Okay, so then how do you explain shale in between all these sedimentary strata that were formed by moving rapidly Alter, moving water? Altering, altering depositional environments. So, so shale could be deposited, for example, by a lake. Okay, so you're, you're trying to tell us. Now, if you ask me a question, please okay. let me finish. All right. Shale is deposited, say, in the bottom of a lake. And then over time, over however many big chunk of ge geology years you're talking here, the lake uh, migrates slowly. As that lake migrates, eventually you have a new depositional environment that takes hold. Um, say, a swamp-like environment, you get some coal. So you would have shale in that particular location, but around that lake, you didn't have, let's say, depositional environment. You had layers of erosion so you have shale you have a shale layer however big you're talking about here because you have a reason to drop something that's slow like a mud so how do you explain shale uh strata that are in the earth over here and then eight miles away those same layers of shale are in are in folded or are folded as deformed strata in a mountain like the canadian rockies so uh, why would you have shale not folded in one location but folded in another? Because the, the land is... That's much, what you're asking, right? Much fl flatter. No, I'm saying the strata is continuous, contiguous. So you it's have... over here a beside a the mountain. Big old, where it's yeah, that, now, let me... Hold on. It's I'm over here to beside out, the I'm mountain. Well, I'm trying, trying to explain. I'm trying to explain. It's over here beside the mountain where the land is relatively flat, and it's up inside that mountain where it's contorted because the whole mountain is distorted, strata, deformed strata. It's the same shale in the mountain as it is five, six, seven, eight miles away and where there is no mountain. Sure. Okay. okay. Uh, right. An example of how that would work? Uh -huh. Well, the shale, right. if it's solid um, rock, it can't get deformed like that by heat and well, pressure. That mountain didn't come up along the. You asked me a question, then you to deform that, that mountain didn't come up along the, the erogenous. That mountain didn't come up along the erogenous zone. It came up in the middle of the continent in the in the Rockies. It's landbound mountain formation. So you should let me try to answer the question that you ask instead of running over. Now, if that's not very. <laughs> Fair of you. No, I just want um, you to understand the question thoroughly. Okay. So you have a shale here, and then you have some sort of highland um, that produced that, that shale layer can carries over. Okay. Um, again, my contention would be the shale, uh, slow moving waters, mud looks like mud, shale is mud, etc. So you have a very large lake deposit. Lake dries up for some reason, resulting in shale. Then you, uh, then later on at some point, a particular piece of that deposit is deformed in some way. Could be a anticline. You say it's not all genetic. You say it's not a mountain building event. Uh, it's just like one. No, I didn't say it wasn't a mountain building. I thought event. you did. So it could be a mountain building event then, right? Well, it would be if it's the shale strata is found in in a mountain. Yeah. But isn't that what you just said? Where is the shale that's confusing? It's not. Is it in a hill? You said the shale is deformed, correct? Am I, mountain, I miss, yeah, do I miss yeah, you? Yes, in a mountain, shale can be deformed. Yes. Right. Okay. Okay. okay I'm. I'm. Maybe. May, let me check the t comments. Maybe I didn't quite hear his question. Your question correctly, but why do you have? <laughs> All right, could you restate your question like in two, three sentences, please? Because I seem to have gotten lost somehow. Here's some deformed shale right there. Okay. You're okay. asking how can shale bend that way? 
Yes, yeah, solid rock doesn't bend, it breaks. Well, brittle rock does quickly, but solid things can deform slowly over time. No, uh, not I, in I, the Rocky I got Mountains a good example for you. Okay. I got not, a good not, example of that now. Not, not in the Rocky Mountains or the Canadian Mountains because those mountains didn't form 10, 20 kilometers down where the temperature is high enough to, to allow them to deform that way. Well, these, mountains were, need... these mountains were pushed yeah, up you... from the... Let me finish. These mountains were pushed up from the surface of the earth. That means... These the are not statements I said, though. So That you can't get shale this, you know, 100 feet down or 1,500 feet down inside the earth to come up as deformed strata without being I never gravel. said the shale was buried though. Okay. You, but I'm 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 pointing out let, let me try to help you understand. You you're not thinking. Let me explain. Well, uh, no need to be okay. insulting. The, the Rocky Mountains didn't come from the erogenous zones. They formed in the interior of the continent. They weren't they were pushed up from the surface of the earth upward, right? Okay. The shale that's in them is deformed like what you see on the screen. That's an extreme example, however, of course. It's not always so like that. It's cool looking rock. I'll give you that. But, okay, so these particular examples and others, countless ones, are deformed strata, okay? That can't happen unless that rock is deep inside the earth, 10 at minimum, 10, maybe as much as 20 or more kilometers down. Okay, that's where the temperature is high enough to deform the rock so it can bend like that. But that can't have happened for the Rocky Mountains. So you, <laughs> as I said at the beginning, I never said this sediment was buried. You, you, you're making the contention that you can only bend something if it's, I guess, hot enough to be bendable, that's, but not hot enough to melt, right? That's, that's true, yes. In exam things do not necessarily have to be very, have to be warmed to still be somewhat malleable. Not everything. Mica is super, super brittle. If you get a piece of muscovite, you it breaks off like paper, yes. But not all rocks work that way. A good example of this would be uh, you have a concrete floor, put a real heavy desk on it. After 10, 20 years, the tables of that desk are going to push into the concrete floor. Concrete's very hard. It's concrete not going to deform but, unless it's hot. Well, no, the concrete floor is will deform under the weight of the heavy table. It will the, the legs will fall in. It it's will not going to deform down. like that. Well, you know, that's over ten years, but you keep a pressure up, it will keep deforming. No, that's the you're, argument. You're not going to get that. No. Well, you 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 just say that like it's. Well, let me prove it to you. Okay, I'll show you what scientists have to say about it, and then you, because apparently you're not aware of what they say. Okay. No, I so, think I'm kind of aware. Well, apparently not. This is from Stress and Strain <laughs> Rock Deformation, Columbia University. Let me read this to you. They describe ductile deformation. Deeper than 10 to 20 kilometers, uh, the enormous lithostatic stress makes it nearly impossible to produce ro uh, a rock fracture. Um, but the high temperature makes rock softer, less brittle, more malleable. Rock undergoes plastic deformation when a differential stress is applied then is stronger than its yield, it flows. This yes. occurs in the lower continental crust and in the mantle. Now, here's yes. another. Hold on. This is from Folds Faults in Rock Deformation, University of Houston. What determines whether a rock bends or breaks? They state. When an external force is applied to buried rocks under low confining pressure, such as near the surface of the earth, the rock typically deformed by simple fracturing. This is known as brittle deformation. At higher confining pressures, a similar directional force will cause the deeply buried rock to actually flow with deformation without fracturing. This is known as ductile deformation, and the rock is said to behave plastically. Rock, now pay attention. Rocks under low confining pressure near the surface, earth, the Earth's surface, therefore generally deform through fraction and faulting. Rocks deep within the crust of the Earth under high confining pressure is deformed by folding. Okay? So it doesn't happen near the surface of the Earth. It happens where? 
10 to 20 kilometers down. Okay, so the Rocky Mountains possess all kinds of foliage and strata, including shale. That had to have happened 10 to 20 kilometers down inside the earth where the temperature is high enough for the rock to become deep plastic. Otherwise, it won't bend. It will just break. It will turn into gravel. If you try to push a whole mountain up, your your explanations are factual. Yes. Okay. Ductile deformation does occur at depth. I, I'm i not going to say it doesn't. Okay, I will good. say that very much is true. Good. We're on the that same page being, about that. That good. being said, okay. that does not mean that you cannot have some sort of deformation without depth and pressure. This is not saying re, if I if you know if I'm missing this in the sentence really? someplace, this is not saying hundred percent of the time. Oh, this is the majority no, of the time. They, they sure. A hundred percent. You're not reading carefully. Do I have to read this again? <sighs> no, they're they're emphatic about it. You, it only occurs at that depth. It won't the occur. Exact, the exact pictures you're showing me of what you call shales, they could be, I could believe that, sure, in the Rocky Mountains. Oh, they state the, this. Rocks under exact, low confining pressure near the surface of the earth, therefore generally deformed through fracturing yeah, and generally. Faulting. Generally means not 100%. They generally well, deform that way. Right, yes, so there's do. volcanic material. Good God, of course there's volcanic material. I didn't say volcanic That's going to be the exception they're talking about. That's well, not going to be sedimentary uh, strata. Well, it's already concreted in the solid rock. This is brittle. Granite doesn't bend very easily either. But, but according to you, granite can bend. So why couldn't well, shale bend? If it's granite 10 to 20 bend? miles down. Well, so now you're conflicting with yourself because you just, no. that generally, you said a, a exception of that would be igneous rock. But igneous mm. rock isn't necessarily less brittle than so sedimentary what, rock. What, 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 could, what could be the exception? You just rock. said igneous rock would be an exception. Rock? Said no, I didn't say that. No, the exception is going to be rock that is not yet concreted into solid rock. It's rock that's malleable Seven. still because it's, well, that or volcanic material that is not cool enough to become solid yet. Okay. Well, but A, if that's you're talking not what your about, sentence is saying. And B, if you have a, oh, if, please, if you have God, a, uh, you're, well, it's not. You're and trying to B, twist the hell out of what they're you, saying. And B, if you have a igneous, uh, if you have a lava flow, for example, that's still fluid, like you expect it to bend and hold its form. They, they, let's go back in what they say. At higher confining pressures, <sighs> the rock will become plastic. I'm not in, disagreeing in that high confining pressures do you will know what that Do you know what that means? That means you've got miles of material above the stuff we're talking about that gets deformed. Miles. I'm not saying that doesn't do it. I, okay. I've never once said that. So, the Rocky Mountains that were the surface of the earth. That's not the only way. And the Rocky, example. The Rocky Mountains were the surface of the earth pushed up. They didn't come from 10 to 20 kilometers down. All right, I, I'm game with changing the subject a little bit to the Rocky Mountains, if you want. We're kind of circling each other here. <laughs> I'm just pointing out that if you find folded strata of chalk, I mean, of, 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 of uh, shale. shale inside of, of the Rocky Mountains, that stuff wasn't 10 to 20 kilometers down. Because so, two things. Firstly, that can only yes. happen at great depth. Secondly, the Rocky Mountains were not great depth. The Rocky Mountains were pushed up from the surface of the earth, not from deep inside the earth. Hey, I'm game with changing over to point B there. Why, 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 in your opinion, are the Rocky Mountains could not have formed, this deformation in the Rockies could not have formed at 10 to 20 kilometers? Because the strata that are in them are contiguous. They, they, they're found outside the Rocky Mountains. You can, as you, let me, you're in a car. You're driving to the Rocky Mountains. The mountains are 10 miles away from you. You get five miles away, eight, seven, eight, nine miles away, and you bore a hole into the ground, and guess what you find? You find a series of sedimentary strata in the earth going down, and you dig down, and you take a core sample that's 500 meters deep. 
You look at that core sample and you go to the Rocky Mountains, you're going to find that same core sample going down through the mountain. Um, I'm not going to say you're wrong. I, I didn't study the Rocky Mountains. Do you have a particular formation that you can name? The whole mountain. Yeah, again, I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just, do you have a formation that we can use as an example? The whole mountain. That's not a formation. Okay, I understand. So the, the, the strata that are bent, that are deformed strata in the Rocky Mountains are the same strata that are underneath the tires of your car as you're driving to the Rocky Mountains. Yes. Okay. They didn't form deep inside the earth. They were the so, surface of the earth pushed up. So then, again, I'm not giving you point A. Of course, I'm not. You know, when but, I say surface, I mean the first several thousand meters of it going down into the earth. I mean, they weren't 10 to 20 miles deep in the earth. They were, you know, uh, several thousand feet deep, not, some, not miles and miles deep. That's my point. Okay. Yes. So, right. um, again, do not study the Rockies. I'm not super fluent every single part of the Rocky Mountains. But uh, an example I could come up with is I would say it is possible that a lot of that stuff perhaps was buried under deposition and then came itself back up. Um, are you saying that just simply the size of the particular layer that you're talking about is not covering it? Is that your argument? And also, are you saying that the entire Rocky Mountains is one layer? No, I'm not saying it's one layer. No. So then, perhaps a section of the Rocky Mountains could have been buried, and then here's here's some of the Rocky it, Mountains right back here. Up. Here's some of the Rocky Mountains right here. You see this these sedimentary strata in the mountains. This well, I, don't know, I don't know the sedimentary from that picture, but I'll give it to you for sake of conversation. Okay. All right. There's sedimentary strata. That's that's not an explanation. I'm giving it to you, uh, though. Sure, right. why not? There's sedimentary. Sure, yeah. You can see the striation, the, the, the color lines. There's a sedimentary strata, okay? Okay. This, okay. Now, this material, you can see it's at an angle, too. And you can see this curvature here. Because this material, this these this stuff right here, up here, was once down here. It was the surface of the earth pushed up out of the earth is why it's at that the strata are at this angle. This material received uh, experienced tremendous horizontal pressure, which literally shoved it up out of the earth. This was material going deep into the earth. These strata. So it was like tiny, pushed up like a push pop. These, these, yes. These okay. strata that you see in this mountain right here are found miles from the mountain because it's the Rocky Mountains. Uh, they don't all look exactly like this, of course, but they were pushed up out of the earth. Okay. So if you not 10 to 20 action. kilometers deep, though, just as high as the mountain is, which is what, three to five, 6,000 feet. So yeah. Neff, is your so that break point that did the strata in your argument just snap off? No, it was soft, moist materials recently deposited. It had not concreted in solid stone yet. So the it mountains shot were, off. The well, mountains were soft, produced rapidly the during shape? the flood of Noah. They were produced rapidly. All the mountains of the earth were produced in a matter of months, if not days or, or weeks. So what, what, what do you think that any particular layer is up there? Sandstone, shale, limestone? Probably shale. all of those, yeah. Well, pick, pick one. Sandstone? You want to, do, want to say one of those layers is sandstone? Um, there might be some sandstone in there. Okay. Maybe, so maybe. the sandstone is soft enough. Again, I'm, I, I, I'm just trying to make sure I got your argument correct here. The sandstone was soft enough that something push-popped it, uh, horizontally up or oh, sorry uh vertically up somehow um we haven't got to that mechanism yet has pushed it up and it was soft enough to bend away from the outlying material like what where does i you can't see my mouse derp um that red line there for example uh, go back please thank you uh, that red line there. Where the red line indicates off. the curvature of the materials. Yes, if I'm I using it for another different. red line like no, this. No, I'm using it for a different reason. 
Okay. So that red line, where that red line is, let's say that's a layer of sandstone, for example. Um, mm -hmm. Where that line leaves the mountain, where it bisects the mountain there, mm -hmm. originally that was an, a continuing on sandstone, right? Down inside the earth. Yes, the down dip. at the other end of this nice little lake here, there's yeah. the other, there's its brother. That's uh, correct. Yes. Okay. So you're saying that those two brother sandstones for the most were part soft true, enough yeah. were soft enough to uh bend away from each other they snapped where's its brother why is it why did that particular sandstone leave its brother that it was right next to before this it's uplift just, happened it's just the particular way that the pressure was applied to the earth the material well, did it did it like snap off or did it like kind of bend off like like you have mud and you have wet sand in your hand squeeze it the, the well, I don't know. Down. You can't model this in your mind. Imagine that well, you, I'm, you. I'm trying to have you explain it to me. That way, I, well, I well, imagine you got some right. mud. Imagine that you got some mud. And it was dryish mud, but not dry. And you poured it into a, a container, a big, a six foot by six foot container, and you have a push uh, thing on one end, a board that goes the length of it and a, a wooden dowel attached and you start slowly pushing the mud what's going to happen it's going to break and push upwards in different places inside that container is it not sure it will. and all this happened during the flood like there's water above the mountain right now as well um well, likely no. The waters were probably uh, uh, in the process of abating from the continents, or had largely done so by the time this mountain was pushed into that. Uh, I mean, uh, before the mountain was pushed into that formation. So the mountain outside the mountain pushed up. The mountain pushed up. Well, it was hard enough to keep its shape more or less but soft enough to be pushed be deformed like that as well yes after the flood and it was okay because i think I, I think i get i think i get what you're trying to say possessed um, a lot of water and was but... not concreted in the stone yet these are the rocky mountains too you can see chevron folds in them because that material was still soft and moist. It couldn't have been solid rock. Solid rock doesn't bend. It breaks. Well, but you just told me solid rock can bend at depth. Uh, uh, the, not the Rocky Mountains didn't form that way. So they that, that brings they weren't back bended 20 kilometers down. down. You haven't explained to me. So your explanation as to why it couldn't have formed is because there are layers that extend beyond the individual Rockies, right? No, that's just one evidence. The, the 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 Rocky Mountains did not form deep inside the Earth. They were the first couple thousand feet of the surface of the crust of the Earth pushed up out of the Earth. Here's some more beautiful examples. This mountain range, uh, you can see that the mountains going back into the distance there, one mountain after another, was once the surface of the Earth. It's continuous with the floor of the valley. It's pushed up out of the surface of the earth so why do we have an anticline in the first example but we don't have anticlines following them that's just the various ways that the pressure was applied to that particular location of the earth is all so hey you got someone in the backstage too oh, okay thanks for telling me yeah um that's george hey george hello george hi nev hi Oga. i'll let, I'll let um, you finish before I've, i make my point thank you all right, so we're just kind of going with the pressure work. So, so, so here, ask yourself this question, Orge. Could, could this material, obviously this material was not deep in the earth, right? We can see plainly. I, with I have yet to give right. you that, but sure. I'll get, right. For the sake of conversation. This, this material was the very surface of the earth that's been pushed upward like that. And yet it's deformed. It's curved, but it's solid rock. So it couldn't have been heated there's only one way this rock could deform in that curve with that curvature going all this curvature goes down and up the other side where there's more mountains. Okay. I'll so take your word for it from this picture. Solid rock won't bend that way. It would break. 
So this would be nothing but a bunch of fractured rocks that were pushed up on top of each other. So it you're saying this so you don't continuous. get that bowl shape doesn't come from you can't get that bowl shape without whatever mechanism you have for pushing these rocks up? It can't happen unless that material is still moist and soft enough you could reach down and make a dirt clot out of it with your bare hand. Hmm. And that somehow happened at the perfect exact moment in between the mud being too hard to bend and the mud being too soft to hold its form. This mountain jumped up in that particular span of time and all the layers also happened to be at that exact same consistency. All the different layers of whatever that is happened to all be at the exact right consistency to push this mountain up in the exact same correct way, all from the same force, and then all harden at the same rate as well to keep their shape. Because that's more than just that's more than just mud, right? Assuming I don't even know what the hell it is. I don't know this picture, but assuming those are different layers, not all one well, sure, it's a sedimentary thing. deposits. The entire mountain range was made under the same event. Yes, this but they're all different. They're all different. Rock, there's different rock types, I assume, right? Oh, look, I, I, I'm sure. I'm sure to some degree there is, but let's look, but examine them. Well, this you picture does see, nothing for see, me. It's just gray. It, you can see that this the color of this material is the tone it is because it's the surface of the earth. Oh, look, there it is again. Oh, look, another mountain. Same thing. Same thing. So what's the layer below it? They were all the, the same sedimentary strata. If you want to go off color, what's the darker layer below it then? Well, I don't haven't examined that rock to see what type it is, you know. I'm just pointing well, out that the the pressures in the continent, which forced up this forced up this entire mountain range together, and during one event, and none of it was solid concreted rock when it happened. Could not have been. So that white layer you say was originally flat. Doesn't it look like the white layer is the white layer is the youngest, and then the, well, youngest geologically speaking, in terms of stack, and then yes. the darker layers behind it are older. Uh, yes, technically, according so to your something. Least. Well, yeah. Usually, you think the stuff on top's youngest, the stuff in the bottom's oldest, right? Typically. So I, I would whatever, say by, by a matter of minutes to days, possibly. Well, sure, minutes to days, sure. Yeah, if, but you say uh, in your uh, world, a couple of million years at least. So something. <laughs> so something pushed up this. When did it when did it turn? At what point during the pushing did it turn? I don't know what you're asking there. Well, the the white layer that was the surface is vertical, not horizontal. Right. It's so it's at curved, some point curved, it must have upwards. went from being horizontal to being vertical. Because it's yes. right now. It's because it was forced up out of the earth by the pressure in the continent. But what what pressure is it's like flipping it like a coin? Or like <laughs> Well, how, how does it, so it just vertical? rose up? You know, it didn't happen instantly. It might have happened over a period of a few days to a, a, a several hours to a, to a week or a month. Yes, push. You, your example initially was a push pop, and if I take a, if I get a push pop and I push the uh, mm -hmm. uh, you're, you're, popsicle up, you're taking for up stuff that doesn't exist now. Well, that was the example you, that you said was okay before was a push pop to push these mountains up. Well, that's the question you asked. The I said upward, you call the top layer is up, upwards like a push pop. Yeah, but how fast was push pop pushed up? I don't know. I could, put, I could push a push pop I up would, in a few days. I would say I'm just pointing out that it was it, it was pushed up by the geologic pressures. That's all. So you're not seeing my question? No, I don't see you're making a point of any kind. Well, so my, my question, I'm not trying to make a point. I'm asking a question. My question is, you said that white layer on the left side of each mountain, the, that white the, layer was the top layer. With, you know, unless there was a, a very thin amount of other materials that has eroded away since then, that was actually the very surface of the earth, and that was an, an, an immediately below it. So that everything the case, to the right that of that white the layer would be not, would be below the surface, right? You're, that white layer is the grass, and the gray stuff be, below it's the soil, technically, right? Is all my miss, or is that? Well, that's what it looks like, man. So 
right? To use that sod analogy, the white layer is grass, the gray layer is soil. I pick up a. I, pick I up would a say the white sod. layer is grass, the white layer is rock. No, I'm using it as an analogy. I'm because the white layer is the top, and then the gray layer would have been the uppermost a uh, hundred feet or something. Yes. So that gray layer is not below it horizontally, like a you know a cake. Or for, if you want frosting, since that goes... No, that is down. definitely going to be below it. Look, if yeah, you can't... But it's not now. Picture, now it's vertically stacked. Now it's standing next to it. you're not telling me you can't look at that picture and see that this material was once the surface of the Earth and is now pushed up and curved. Are you honestly... What curved it? What curved it? I, pushing what off curved like a push pop. We talked about that. What made it... The curve? pressure in the continent as the continent was being squeezed forced yeah. it upwards. Is that difficult to comprehend? Everything you say is difficult to comprehend. Great, Scott, surely you're not telling me that's difficult for you to comprehend. Uh, yeah. go. Oh, Launching uh, a mountain I'm up in a few days is difficult to comprehend for me, yes. Uh, George, what's up? Uh, I was going to say, the, the main point of what Nesh trying to say is those layers could only have formed in that way if they were moist. Unless you're proposing that uh, it happened deep below the earth, and it would have to be at least 10 kilometres to induce enough heat. Yeah, we talked about with, that. With, with horizontal uh, – sorry, I've been popping out in and out of the of conversation, but the only way it could have happened is if it was 10 kilometres under, un, under the ground inducing enough heat with horizontal tectonic motions to bend it, and then somehow it would have to have been risen high up into the surface with the top 10 kilometres eroded away from it but yes. but hold on my 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 question uh to you uh what specialty in geology do you have i uh have a degree in geophysics uh, geophysics okay what your concrete example uh, i've inspect i'm an engineer by the way i've inspected numerous uh, uh slabs concrete slabs in warehouses and factories but yes. the o the only the only two um, defects that I've seen have been cracking and isolated depressions where it was a workmanship issue rather than uh, a load issue. And the way we fix those is by using a, a product called EpiRes. I'm not sure if you've heard it, but it's almost the consistency of water. You literally lay it on the on the concrete floor. It seeps through the cracks, and over 24 hours, it hardens harder than the concrete. Yeah, it's a resin. But yeah. the good the, the good part about the Epiras product is being the consistency of water. It finds its own level, and it fills those depressions up. So I, I want to ask you: Is where have you seen a table deform a, a concrete slab? I, I, I've never ever seen it. Um, my dad owns a garage, and the uh, the carts in the garage, the tool the tool carts, make little wheel grooves in the concrete over sitting there for a long time, as well as the hoist depress down but the that, concrete because they've been. But that's heavy. that's not bend. That's, that's not where? bending. That's not bending. Swear. I mean, I mean, I mean, women women well, that walk, women with high heels when they walk on asphalt footpaths on a hot day, they will make depressions as well. But it's depressions, not deformations. No, not I'm talking – deformations. I'm – they look – yes, the wheels, I'm sure – I guess the wheels would probably be wear, but the hoist lifts would not be wear. The hoist lifts would be depression because over time – Things will slowly bend down. Glass is a fluid, right? Glass slowly melts. Over time, things well, will bend without breaking. Uh, not a whole lot, without question, in not, our lifetimes, not a whole lot, not, but not, things not will bend. No, concrete will, ne will never do that. The, the only way you can get that concrete to bend is if, the, if, for a start, if they didn't use the right concrete or the subgrade below it is weak enough uh, to, to, to actually deform. So the, the actual um, subgrade below it deforms. Yeah. But, you'll, but you'll find, you'll find if, if you uh, remove that concrete, you'll find the base of the concrete below, below the surface would have cracked. Concrete would only deform by the slightest measure as well. Any more than that, it's going to break. 
Well, exactly. That's that's the thing, though, is that if you have if you can have defamation, and you give it enough time, like that's the whole idea of geology. Is it's not a matter of time. It's a matter things. of the fact that the if grain it starts to deform, it can continue to deform. No, it's a matter of the the, the grains and the concrete are, are locked chemically together. When you break those bonds, you get broken rock. Uh. I, 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 again, I always got to say it. I don't know concrete. <laughs> you know, I, I take George's well, word on concrete much more than I take I'll, my own. I'll, I'll, I've but. designed numerous structures in concrete. Uh, okay, you know, you know why we put steel reinforcement in concrete. You, usually, usually we'll put we'll put two layers of steel. The bottom layer will usually be stronger than the top layer, but the bottom layer is actually to to take all the bending forces that are involved in it, and and that and that. Uh, prevents uh, cracking on the on the underside of the concrete. Yeah. But the top the the top the top layer of reinforcement in the concrete is usually there to provide uh, strength uh, because of environmental conditions. That is, uh, the sun or the weather. Uh, on hot days, the concrete will expand. On cold days, yes. it will contract. So that top layer of reinforcement prevents that surface cracking. The bottom layer is the one that actually prevents the concrete from literally breaking up and uh, and uh, uh, destroying itself. So, yeah, that's so in, I just in, in simplistic it terms. Talking and I, I threw it into Google, as you do with the internet, and yeah. Google brings up the concept of creep, which is a permanent creep, creep. movement of deformation of a material. Yeah, yes, creep, creep, creep is usually uh, used in um, things like uh, timber, if you've ever, if you've yeah, ever used this an is under, on, under, this is on concrete's Wikipedia page, C concrete, but it'll, it'll, concrete, but, concrete. It'll, but it'll still crack though, uh, Ogre. It'll still this crack. Is separate for, no, this it, again. I'm going off the Wikipedia. I know Wikipedia is not the be all end all, but um, yeah, movement or deformation of a material in order to relieve stresses within the material. Concrete that is subjected to long term forces are prone to creep. This is not crack. Creep can sometimes reduce the cracking because cracking is the breaking, and creep is just the slow, steady crawl. This is a different section from cracking, tension, no, shrinking, what have you. No, no, no. It, it will cr it will crack. It's concrete oh. is is a brittle well, material. Well, it's ductile. Wikipedia disagrees with you. <laughs> well, well, <laughs> well, well. I'm talking from experience. Okay. I don't know who edited Wikipedia, so. But again, I guess well, I could also use the example. Uh, when I was in high school, the reason I got into geology is I uh, did a whatever the high school version of an internship is. I can't remember work study maybe. I worked at a um, a lab that tests materials. Actually, it was like an architecture lab, but they tested concretes and stuff and built different concretes for different buildings, right? And they put those in the big presses to get strength tests. You know what I'm talking about, right, George? Yeah, yeah, we've done them at school. Yep, and the concrete would take a certain amount of stress before it broke, right? Correct, correct. Yeah, well, that's right. Every, every, everything, is, everything is designed for a specific load. Yes. So you exceed that load, you're, ex you're going to expect it to fail. Yes, but yeah. up until the point at which it fails, it d does the concrete not undergo something? I mean, it's not just zero or 100, right? Uh, well, there there are severe it, limits when it comes to Yeah, material. that's right. That's right. Um, look, look um, uh, how should I put this? I'm trying to simplify it for you. But usually uh, the span versus the deflection rate is, yeah. is, uh, is specified I, in, uh, in whatever design code you're using. So I, do know some, code, I do know some engineering terms, so you can try to okay. – you can be a bit so, mathy with me if you want. So, so you've heard like L over 300, length over 300. You try and minimize – uh, deflections to that point, you, usually yes. for uh, e either for aesthetics or for structural issues. But so some things like concrete, you'll probably you'll probably use L over five hundred because it's a brittle material. Yet yes. you will get some you will get some deformations, right? But you will induce some form of cracking. But well, what but the deformation is, what, is, but, what, is but, sorry. but look what. No, no, Ogre, what Nefi's shown you is not that kind of deformation. It's completely <laughs> different to that. It, you can see the layers literally rising up and falling down. We're not talking about a few millimetres. We're, talk, we're talking like hundreds of metres of deformation. Yes. 
And again, I'm, I have no, no, at no point said these things weren't buried. This is a different conversation, but yeah. you can, you, you just admitted it. You can go to creep and shrinkage of concrete and look at charts that I'm not an engineer. But, so think I don't have to do these things, but these, you can bend stuff without breaking it. And yeah, yeah, but, if but you can bend these, something, no, no, why can't you no, continue okay. to bend it? Okay, we design it to do that. That's why we put the steel in there yeah, to, exactly. to stop. To stop the, yeah, but this is a designed structure with steel reinforcement in it. Well, no, the concrete itself is what's bending. And it's not bending a lot. I'm not, not saying much. it's bending it's, a lot. It's, You're talking no, a, tens of thousandths of a, you know, inch here. No, it's, or, yeah, inch. No, it's a, no, reinforced concrete is a, comp a composite structure. I it did say steel, reinforced steel. concrete. I'm not bringing up reinforced concrete. You did. I'm not bringing that up. Pure concrete. And these violent, these violent chevrons, as Neff calls them, is that the result of slow, gradual change? That's probably not. I could definitely, I don't know. Again, I'm not a structural geologist. I'm a geologist. Yeah, I can't. But this one here is pinpoint sharp. Yeah, See? but again, we have an issue where we have more than one mechanism. I have more than one mechanism here. A lot of this stuff is caused, yes, by burial and to re reduce the rigidity whatever the word would be, of the rock. Yes, a lot of that would cause that way. But Rigidity. things do bend a bit, too. There's another evidence of cataclysmic um, uh, happening here in this mountain, if you'll notice. Look at the material <laughs> here. The geology. Look at the material that is has eroded from the mountain and is piled up down at the bottom of it, near, along the side. If that mountain had been eroded, uh, exposed to the surface of the earth for tens of millions of years, there would be literally, well, firstly, in, in truth, there would be no mountain. But at the very least, what we would expect if even five million years worth of erosion had gone on, there would be a pile of gravel at the bottom of that mountain that would climb nearly to the top of So, one, I, I'm finally changing subjects. I just want... We're changing subjects here. Was it ten? Okay, I gotta watch the time too. I gotta go to bed at some point this night. But well, take a look at this also. There's a giant hole on the side of that mountain, and it's beautifully shaped Sweet. because there was a giant boulder in that mountain that literally just fell out of it, leaving a, a hole. Sweet shape in that mountain. It's an interesting feature. So your argument is that this mountain should have eroded away. Well, in uh, 200 million years, in, in yeah, in fact, in 20 million years or less. So we are assuming that the rate of erosion is constant? Um, and we're assuming no occurred? Under uniformitarianism, it would have to be constant. Uh, Why? It would have to be constant millennium to millennium to millennium. Why? Why? Why does it have? Because to be that's coming? what uniformitarianism posits: that the processes are going going on the Earth have been occurring at roughly the same rate throughout geologic history. Not the same rates. The processes haven't changed, but the rates sure change. I mean, not, not, not from <laughs> not from millennia to millennia to millennia, going back hundreds of thousands into millions of years. No. Well, it depends on the location. The whole no, the, no, no that's I think you're you, inflating the idea of uniformitarianism. No, now you're there. trying to misrepresent uniformitarianism, Lord. You really? I'm are. not. I'm, I'm the yeah. proponent of it. Because the evolutionists believe that the geological processes that were going on in the Earth 350 million years ago are going on at the same rate, roughly the same rate, 90 million years ago. Yeah, we're going to have to we're going to have to differ on our definitions there. Well, apparently you don't understand uniformitarianism then. I, I, I would argue I do. But. I'm having to say you don't, not because if you believe what you're saying, because you're misrepresenting uniformitarianism. Well, I'm the one that you, surely you, the processes. So no, right, the processes are going to vary from century to century, no doubt that can occur, but but not over periods of fifty thousand years. Then the previous fifty thousand, the previous fifty thousand, another fifty thousand, hundred thousand, two hundred thousand, three, four, five million, two million. 10 million, 20 million. Yes, I, I get your have, point now. If okay. You numbers, yes. It would have to be going on at roughly the same rate over well, the vast We're going to talk about that there. picture. Can we go back to that picture? Oh, oh God. Yes. Oh God. Can, I, can I ask, do you know there's different strengths of concrete? 
Hey, concrete. Uh, yeah, yeah, very much. You okay, know there's, better than there's, me, but I'm aware of it, yes. Well, there's, there's usually 15 MPA concrete, which is used for really uh, just... Uh, Say say for garage for a garage or something, but uh, I, I would never that, specify that. I'm assuming that. that's like quickcrete. I don't know what quickcrete is, but uh, oh, you're not you're not yeah uh, thing in America. Continue. Uh, well, well, we don't use that term, but um, it's just a recipe it, of concrete that that's, that that uh, that that, that uh, solidifies faster than typical concrete. It's probably not as oh, strong, I, therefore, either. Okay, well, yeah, well I've. I've, invest, I've invested a fair bit of money in this company that uses nanotechnology. That's a, it's an additive to concrete, which allows which allows the concrete to be laid in thinner layers, but achieve the same strength. But Sweet. anyway, I, 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 I digress. But what I'm saying is, there's different strengths of concrete, and there's different applications that you use that concrete. Yes. Now, you, you, usually. If you don't add um, reinforcement to the concrete, you're usually laying it as as what we call a blinding layer, yes. say uh, under a drain, under a drain or whatever, or a footpath. And, and in that case, those um, those thicknesses are very small. Now, if the subgrade below it is soft, it's going to deform. But but I guarantee you, I will guarantee you 100 percent. If you were to expose the, ba the base of that concrete, you will see cracking. That's what I'm trying to say. You will definitely see cracking. Again, I mean, on a uh, – we're talking about something with just pictures here. I mean, I, without you know, any evidence. Uh, are there examples of the top <laughs> layer of concrete deforming, the bottom layer of concrete cracking? The, ge the geologic formations that. that you see on the screen are the evidence. They're profound evidence that the, the the mountain ranges of the earth formed rapidly while there were sm soft, moist materials that could not have been solid rock when they were made. That's the point. And that means uniformitarianism cannot be true. And, uh, and cataclysmic, a catastrophic event is what formed all the mountains of the earth. And that matches the flood model perfectly. So uniformitarianism cannot be true. Period. It's impossible. <laughs> well, I think that's the whole point of this conversation is that one side of one one third of this group does not agree with that sentence. Well, the mountains are the evidence; they prove it. That's the point. And yeah, and to me, the mountains very much do not prove it because you're saying this for you. You've said right. a couple times this forms in a couple days with this uh, magical uplifting that we haven't talked about mechanism yet. I, mean, I don't think I have been, time to talk about mechanism. Um, to be honest, it could have been anywhere from uh, a handful of days to two two months or. or three. But again, I, we, we seem to I, have skipped I, over my original question when George got yeah. here, though. Yeah, I got. I was. I, I was just going to add <clears throat> to to the de, uh, to the deformation of the rock. Now you're a geologist, and you should know this. When, when you apply <laughs> heat, <saying> that. <laughs> when, when, when you apply heat to a rock, would you expect some some form of crystallization to occur? Uh, I guess it depends on the rock. I mean, you, you apply heat to a sandstone. Well, you got to do a lot of heat to get that quartz to do something else. Well, well, you were talking about shale before, and I, I've yeah. experienced a lot of shale, and it's, and it's bloody hard to dig through, by the way. You have yes. to use uh, e either a rock breaker or, or some kind of uh, machine with, um, uh, what I think we, we call them tiger's teeth. I don't know what you guys call them. I don't but, know um, off my head. But, but but my point is, if if it's if it's subjected to that kind of heat, you'd expect some form of crystallization to occur because <laughs> because of the heat. And, and what Nephi shown you, if if you look at, uh, I think there's plenty of examples where they've shown there there are bends in those rock layers without crystallization, which which definitely suggests that that those layers were bent while they were moist. Um. Yeah, you, you, we'll, we'll jump to like our fifth point here. I am unaware about. I am unaware of what shale does. I mean, shale turns to slate with heat, right? Slate is metamorphic shale, but I'm assuming you're talking about applying heat to shale where it doesn't metamorphize. Uh, I'm, t I'm talking. I'm talking about the folded layers that that um, that you guys. Well, I'm trying to go back to the slate. I'm trying to go to the shale crystal conversation here 
Yeah, like what about saying, it? Well, you said you expect shale to crystallize. And we, when you have shale and you heat it up and you undergo some pressure, it turns into slate, which essentially is like a more brittle version of shale, like a kind of shiny version of shale. Um, <clears throat> and, and I'm trying to, to get what you're gathering here. Are you trying to say that the shale, like before it turned to slate, is that what you're saying should have crystallized? Because slate well, isn't really like crystals. You, if, if there was heat applied to it, you'd expect to see some form of crystallization. Well, but those you, layers, could, you consider slate to be crystallized? Because that's yes, what but happened. Can you, can you, yeah, but can you show me a slate that's bent? I'm sure bent slate exists, yeah. it's. <laughs> I'm sure it does. I, I, if, I ha if you Google deformed slate, let me find out what happens. Let me spell I've, deformed I've, correctly. I've, I've only seen horizontal or vertical uh, layers of slate. I have never seen a deformed deformed layer with, with, without any cracking. I mean, you 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 try you try it. Try it. Yeah, uh, Google it. The uh, go to deformed slate. Google it. The fifth and sixth images have a piece of slate with some nice uh, micro micro. Uh, Crap, losing words here. Bending. <laughs> Whatever you want to call it. It, kind of, it almost looks nice. That's a piece of slate that has a nice fold in it. My, what, what, what micro folding. There what, we go. What, what kind of fold? You, 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 you say in micro fold. You mentioned micro Well, micro fold. in terms of compared to what um, Neff's showing here. <laughs> I guess, yeah, micro is in like hand sized. Okay, so seeing the examples that Neff is showing you though. If there was heat involved, wouldn't you expect some form of crystallization? Well, we seem to be running in a circle here. Again, are you talking crystallization as in the shale turned to slate? Or is there some no, sort of it, weird middle ground between shale and slate? At the edges, you'd expect some form of crystallization. That If there was heat involved, you'd expect some form of crystallization in, in that layer. You you keep just saying that, but you're not. You, you we're skipping over. Show me a picture of a shale crystal under heat. Well, I can't. I can't share anything with you, and, and I haven't got access to to Google because I'm on my mobile phone. I'm down. Oh, to 20, shucks. Tw twenty two. You want me to, to give 20, me something to Google? I'll give it a try. I'm down like, to twenty two percent on my mobile uh, my my phone battery, so <laughs> I might have to. I might have to skip out in a short while because once it gets to about 20, it really draws the power very quickly. Yeah, yeah, it's understandable. That's, I mean, I, I guess what you're asking me is something I'm not familiar with, so I can't really provide you with a good answer because we're kind of talking different terms here. You know, I mean, if I try to talk uh, engineering to you, I'd probably suck at it. So, I mean, like, I, I maybe you're asking a good question that I should look up, but I'm yeah, I'm sorry. It's the best I can offer. Well, well, well as engineers, we, we took geology classes too for one year. I mean, I'm not saying I'm a full-blown geologist, but uh, we, we need to understand materials. And yeah. um, I can That's tell you... you, rock, build, you rock, build our geology, yeah. Yeah, I can tell you rock doesn't bend without breaking. That's, that's just common sense. You don't even have to go to university to know that. Well, you didn't pay good enough attention in your geology class because they told you it does. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, yeah, un under extreme heat and pressure, like I said, about 10, 20 kilometers underground, you might you might expect that, but not not in the surface like you see. Um, yeah, that's the whole point of this conversation is that I disagree. Well, yeah, that's some cool folding you got on the screen, Neff. Yeah. And Ma <laughs> Oga, Oga, yes. marry, marry, marry the two together. 10 to 20 kilometers of overburden to create the heat to bend, right? If, if that's lifted up, 10 to 20 kilometers have, has to erode before you can see it. The current, okay. ero current erosion rates that you guys yourselves have determined is six centimeters per thousand years. You calculate how long we, it would have to take George, to erode. Me and Neff already had this conversation. That average is not is the average is right an average. You can have faster, you can have slow, you can have no erosion for plenty of time. You can have really fast erosion. 
Well, those, as, as, you know, as, an, as an indicator, I've, re, I've read those reports too, mate, and they say that in the, in the maximum case of a mountain, you'd expect about 100 million years before that, that mountain would erode down to the horizontal line. So, yeah, you're right. There are, it is an average. Some will erode quicker and some will, will erode the slower, but it is an average. And the fact is, even even those hard rock mountains will take a hundred million well, years. You, to you're erode. trying to, you're, you're trying to conflate a global average number with an individual example, and that's not fair. You know, the average person may eat three cheeseburgers a day, three cheeseburgers a day at McDonald's. A vegan don't eat any, and a fat ass eats a whole bunch. So. You know, the individual example is the important thing. Let's talk. You need to look at this mountain to figure out the erosion rate for what's going on. That average world number for erosion is irrelevant in a particular example. Well, you don't, you don't know what material was above that mountain that Neff was showing. So you well, can't you can determine. It, 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 is, it is possible to figure out, too. Um, maybe. I don't, again, I don't know the pictures Neff's showing here. We're not talking a specific location. But I, I would firmly argue that a geologist that has studied this particular area would ha be able to answer those questions um i'd like i'd like to see those calculations to see how, how long it would take 10 to 20 kilometers of overburden eroding down to expose that that mountain of folded rock if you have a specific location lat long I, I, it's very possible there's some place out in this 7 billion people that exist that knows the answer to that question. I do not, <laughs> right? But I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility that someone has actually done those calculations to figure out, well, this environment, blah, 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 right? We know how fast the Mississippi River is eroding. So if you have well, evidence of... Did did you re did you read that that uh, paper? I um, I think I actually uh, put yeah it you in sent the chat yeah you once. sent me a PDF for a paper yeah I I mean I didn't study it I didn't know you were testing me on it but that, I didn't take a no 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 I thought you'd be interested enough to read it but they do actually talk about uh, varying degrees of erosion of yes. mountains down to agricultural areas so if if you have got the time r read through it and and see if see if uh, what I'm telling you is wrong. They've actually looked at mountains and they've suggested uh, how long it would take for uh, a mountain to erode. Again, I, I got to go back to my original argument, which is your number is a, I'm assuming, a global average. And that's a essentially a useless factor for an individual no. particular Area. Not, not, it, it, it is a average, but if you read, please read that paper because they tell you there's varying degrees of erosion. They, they conclude that there's quick erosion in the initial stages and then it slows down. And then they talk about yeah. mountains as well. And they talk about other, other areas that aren't the same. Yes, it's an average, but they do talk about dissimilar areas and how quick and how slow they erode yes i i, I yeah. believe i'm understanding your point but i still i get right it's my it's my argument i can give it up too easily i still think that i am making a valid counter to that which is your paper is never going to be an answer to any particular spot on the earth your, your backyard well, uh, is not going to erode the way that paper says it does because your backyard well, it, has its own particular history. Well, you, look, your own geologists, they've, they've done this stuff a number of times. They've confirmed that going back to, um, they, I think it's Dr. James Galuli, you know, it's been verified a number of times. So I, I don't know what else you want. Um, I mean, it's your, your own secular geologists that have uh, put out these figures. I guess I, we're going around in circles here, it seems, but I guess my response to that would be, I think you're right. You're using the word average wrong in the same way. I argue Neff, Neff uses the word average wrong. When he talks about sediment heights. Like, I'm, I don't know. It sounds to me <laughs> like you're just in denial of what, what average means. Well, oh, I believe that's what it sounds like to you, but it's not what it sounds like to me. Yeah. I, 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 I don't know, man. Hey, uh, hey. What you does know, average I mean, mean? I wasn't expecting you, know? you to change your mind either, so. I, I think you just, uh, I, um, 
you're, you're you're distorting it in your mind to protect your views. That's what I. Think. Well, I would say the same thing to you. Let's be honest here. Oh, Ogre, Ogre, do you believe do you believe there's enough water on Earth to actually cover it? Um. Well, I, I if I remember correctly. Also, George, watch your phone. I hate to be a douche about that, but make sure you don't drop out if you don't want to. Um. um I'm on eighteen. I'm on eighteen percent. I'm watching it. No worries. Ooh, buddy. No, the, the, um, reason, the reason the reason why I brought that subject is, again, some some nerd geologist. Sorry hey, to call you hey, a nerd, he but he, he 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 went he went he went to the um, actual process. He went to the actual process of of calculating the volume of dry land mass, and and determined um, by quoting it to in terms of the volume of ocean. You could you could fit. Ten times the dry land mass in the ocean floor, so there's heaps of water to cover the continents. And as the Bible says, the mountains rose, the valleys sank. There yes. is definitely enough water there. Even even the subterranean water. I th- I don't, I'm not sure whether you were involved in this conversation, but we talked about um, a ringwood diet. Yes, I, uh, I was here momentarily for that. My kid woke up, so I had to bounce. Uh, okay, yeah. Well, as as you know, two two percent, two percent by volume on ringwoodite is actual water. Well, and they say there's enough there's enough ringwoodite there to literally uh, so, tell you that there's enough water below the surface than there is above. I think some some people George, are going to say two to three times. George, you, you, you like said like four or five different things all in a row without giving me a chance to respond to any of them. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Sorry. So uh, I got to go back here a little bit because you start up asking me about the amount of water and then you somehow transitioned all the way over. Um, what I was going to say originally was I believe a lot of uh, creationists argue that there wasn't a whole lot of topography on the pre-Noah world and could there be enough water standing in the oceans to cover a, you know, flat as a pancake earth? Sure, maybe. I I don't know the numbers on that, but I could believe it. Um, I don't think that's an argument for the flood, if that would work, but because you could, you know, um, as to what was your other questions? Um, I can't remember the second and third one, but you're going to know would you? Would, no, would uh, my hot my. my, my... My whole point was there's enough water that you, you can you can see it even even the drill holes that they've uh, I think they've dug down 12 miles deep they found seawall sea so, uh, sea water down below I think it was uh, uh, the, 12, the coal is 12 kilometers not 12 miles I think no no uh, it's 12 miles 12 miles there uh, there's a way. shaft in the shaft in Russia is yeah, the, the deepest one at 12 deep. miles sure. Maybe it was 25 yeah. kilometers then, whatever. Um, yeah. but, but is, I guess, if you want to go on to the, what was it called again? Woodrow Light or something? Woodrow Wilson something? <laughs> no. <laughs> what? Ringwood, Ringwood Diet. Ringwood Diet. Thank you. You guys yeah. have these things memorized a lot better than I do. <laughs> um, That's yeah, all right. That Ringwood Diet conversation, um, I'm not super familiar with it because, right, you don't cover this stuff in, that in regular geology rocks for jocks geology classes, but a quick scan over the Wikipedia page seems to tell me that it's um, water hydroxide ions, oxygen, hydrogen ions, and atoms held in the chemistry of it. So it's not like it's a moist rock down there. It's just rock that has these ions in it. Yeah, I, no. I didn't say I didn't say that though. Well, said, that's kind said, of that's the implication I got at least. No, no. I, what I said is two two percent by volume of the ringwood diet. Uh, these are the scientists are claiming that it contains water. So two percent, and and it's well, they say that say. Water, I'm saying hydroxide ions. Are we saying those are the well, same thing? Well, whatever, whatever, mate. Don't don't start with uh, semantics again. Um, they well, even fa- water, they even found water is ev- not a liquid they- and gas. I, I think that how, is a good. Sorry. Do you know how they do you know how they found out about ringwoodite? I'm assuming they dug a hole someplace. No, they actually found it next to a diamond. They actually found the ringwoodite next to a diamond. Oh, cool. Yeah. 
Yeah, again, so that's, I, you, that's know, you guys throw down a bunch of things that you know I'm no expert in. You know, I studied my particular field, and not every geologist in America was given a you know a book on ringwoodite. You know, so okay. Well, well, I didn't know much about ringwoodite when I went to uni either. But uh, there's lots of lots of uh, articles. On Google or, or whatever web, uh, web search you want to use. Oh, Wikipedia is uh, the only thing you need. I, I, I don't trust Wikipedia. I'm sorry. I, I, do, <laughs> I do my own research. Oh, sorry about that. Yeah. But yeah, Wikipedia agrees with you. Though. Ring white has been synthesized, containing 2.6 weight percent water. Yeah. Oh, okay. I thought it was around 2%, but yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Um, again, so that, if you don't mind, I'll skip ahead the conversation a bit. No, yeah, your look, I got, your I got my, my, sorry, 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 sorry to interrupt, but my battery yeah. is just about to conk out. Oh, I'm going to okay. leave and, and have some lunch, but I'll, I'll rejoin on my tablet later on. I don't know if I'll be here. I got to go to bed soon. Different part of the world. No worries, mate. Nice to talk to you again. Yeah, take care, man. See, see you, Neff. See you later, buddy. Bye. Yeah, um... Are you do you, you want to continue the ringwoodite or you're not up on that, Neff? Oh, uh, I don't care what we talk about, really. No, I, I, I mean, if I'm boring you, I mean, I don't know. I'm just no, I'm, I'm just I'm, sitting I, here grading papers, I, I, so yeah, I, I enjoy this kind of conversation. Um, I, I just think that you know, I lost my spot, people, too. Are, Shit. people are uh not willing to believe what they see with their eyes, you know. I, I think common sense will tell you what you're looking at is is evidence for the flood. If you'll be honest with the evidence. Uh, and again, I'm gonna. I uh, the way I look at it, I don't know is the same view, but I view you as the villain of that sentence. I see the geologic evidence very much supporting my held belief, and you are conflating everything to ascertain to your particular worldview. I mean that. <laughs> You know, it's the well, same I mean, coin, just flip it over. The, the material, the, the properties of the mountains and the strata are what they are, though. So the, whose yeah, idea, they fit whose well idea fits the materials? And that's what I'm going to say is mine do. Um, I, I believe that you believe that, yes. Well, so. to me, that's bizarre, you know, that you can see mountains that have been pushed up out of the earth and which are folded and distorted and and not in, accept that that material had to have been moist and plastic and couldn't have been solid concreted rock. Because it again, again I'll repeat myself here. All, is the individual pictures that you show, I do not know the history of what you're showing me. Could that particular thing have been deformed under burial and then uplifted? That's very possible. I see no reason why that couldn't have happened. Um, could that have happened over two days? I'm going to disagree with you very much on that. But show me some random picture and expecting me to detail the a PhD dissertation on its mechanisms is you know, <laughs> unfair. I don't know every single random picture you happen to find off of Google. But that being said, I believe that my mechanisms still would explain them. I, I, I haven't heard you give an explanation as how. Well, again, how possible the, uniformity the basic, in time uh, could explain these kind of mountains. Well, I don't see how Noachian time would explain them myself because well, I view, Maybe you I view the uh, folded history. rock. I view the folded rock as was once laying flat. And then large amounts of pressure came in from the sides, mm -hmm. continental size pressure, and slowly over a very vast amount of time, 10 million years or something like that, pushed the rock and slowly folded it XYZ variety. Was that done at depth to where the rock was more malleable? I think that's very possible. But the continents only move so fast, and the continents are the only kind of force you're going to have on these rocks. So... And well, the individual plates and different faulting zones and what have you. So, over time, these rocks well are still technically um, solid, were at least more plasticky, and then changed and contorted given the pressures in the various directions they got. My argument is kind of the same as yours, I think. Just I don't see it happening in days with 
soft mud. I see it happening over millions of years with rock that would keep it layering. Well, then you, you have to be able to explain um, why the uniform secular uh, geology professors acknowledge that rock won't deform that way unless it's 10 to 20 kilometers down inside the earth. Again, I, I said already I any particular rock could have been 10 to 20 kilometers down. Well, then you have to explain pressure. why the sedimentary strata in these deformed mountains is the surface of the earth right next to the mountain. I could see... I, I again, I'd have to look at a map and see where the fault lines are, see where the uh, organization of the um, particular bed is on a you know helicopter scale. But you, I foresee a situation where a deposit was laid down, and then over time, a particular part of that deposit underwent different stress than another particular part of a deposit. If you're talking about something you know, square miles in size, something like, you know, um, Lake Superior sized, certain parts of Lake Superior can have different deformation than other parts of Lake Superior, even though the bottom of the lake is still all depositing the same layer. Miles away from each other can have very different things. You can have an earthquake at the San Andreas Fault. That doesn't mean you have an earthquake eight miles away from the San Andreas Fault. Mm. Uh, I haven't heard an explanation as to how, if we see the, the materials are the surface of the earth next to the mountain, why you're believing they were, how it's possible they could have been deep inside the earth. I haven't heard you explain that. Because the layer itself would have been deposited down. You have, you have the surface of the earth, sure, whatever that hell that layer is, right? And then over time, a, depos a new depositional environment stacks on top of it, thereby causing it to bury by definition. And then you have that, we were talking shale, I think, God, we've been talking for an hour plus. We had that shale that was originally deposited buried underneath new sediments and new, uh, new strata, volcanic, whatever you want to throw on top of it. And it gets buried enough to become malleable given your example, 10 to 20 kilometers down. When it's down there and is technically more plastic, a certain section of it can undergo a, a particular um, tectonic activity or, or particular stress to cause folding in one part, but not folding in another part. And then that overburden is slowly eroded away over time and it or it uplifts how much over, it how much is eroded the 10 to 20 kilometers necessary to keep the mountain to uh for the mountain to have been deep enough to have been folded right well i mean if it's a mountain you also have uplifting going on right but there's going to be 10 to 20 kilometers of overburden above it yeah, and if it's uplifted, right. that's going to erode pretty dang fast. Right. Gravity's so, going to take care of your work for you. So it's eroded, okay, 10 to 20 kilometers. That, so the continents are like not even 20 kilometers of material above the surface of the ocean level. So why are there continents? Say that again? What? Okay. I'm trying to grade papers. The continents are yourself. not 20 miles deep. Cool across, you know, from ocean level. Okay. All right. So why do we have continents? Well, in some it's places, we over some places we don't. Which we erode to, review, to allow that material 10 to 20 kilometers deep inside the earth to, to become the surface of the earth. You remove 10 to 20 kilometers of material that would remove the entire continent into the ocean. Why didn't that happen? Well, the Mississippi River dumps millions of tons of sediment into its basin every year, but Minnesota still exists. But there would be no continent in 20 million years. Well, you, you're assuming 20, that this 10 to 20 kilometers of the continent were eroded into the yes, sea, I then there you. would be no continent. You you're see. assuming that this particular mountain, this hypothetical mountain, uh, has the same stuff happening to it that the entire continent has happening to it. And that I would say it's very much not the case in modern day. You Wait, go out are you actually different. telling me that you believe it's possible that 10 to 20 kilometers worth of surface of the earth of the continent erodes away from an entire mountain range 
And that erosion is not going to be ongoing 50 miles from the mountain, 100 miles, 500 miles, 5,000 miles away. It's only going to be localized. Again, we still are talking about this random God, nebulous mountain. That being said, you gotta be what happens to be happening on any particular mountain range is not indicative of the entire continent. You well, can have the mountain happen. uplifting. You can have the mountain uplifting, mountain eroding away, sure, but that sediment, A, will be deposited down below. The entirety of the sediment's not going to go to the ocean, right? Rivers have the stuff at the bottom of the river is the <laughs> sediment from upriver, A. B, the erosion that happens on those mountains may not be everything between the mountain and the ocean. You maybe you don't have any ero maybe you have a much lower amount of erosion. You so, so you don't have gravity helping. So the high erosion that removes ten to twenty kilometers of continent to allow a mountain to be uplifted. Only no, that's not what I said. Rip. That's not what I said, Neff. I it didn't say the erosion mountains. allowed the continent to uplift. I said the the mountain uplifted, uh -huh. and then the ero then the erosion happened. In conjunction with that uplift, it doesn't That's matter. You're still losing 10 or 20 kilometers of the material. It's going somewhere. Yeah, it's going down uh, the mountain. Uh huh. It's going away from the mountains, miles away. Well, it's going wherever it decides to go. A river right, would take out a lot of gravity. Well, right the mountain, real nice. That would be more mountains. That no, would be that mountains. would be erosion. A dune is has a triangle shape to it because the top of the dune flows down. What mountain is ten? Dune doesn't erode to form a. There, there are dune. no mountains ten to twenty kilometers high, so it would be material spread out all across the continent. Now, if that's happening sure. for one continent, from from one mountain range, and then in, you know five hundred or a uh, 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 thousand miles away, another mountain range, and then fifteen hundred miles away on the same continent, another mountain range. Uh, so, what a, continent has the, all these mountains on it? Well, North America has numerous mountain ranges. Well, it has the Rockies. That's the Appalachian. big Appalachians, the other side. It's the Rockies, Not the, 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 the uh, Cascade. Uh, well, yeah. those, are, those are the North Rockies, essentially. There, 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 there's probably seven different mountain ranges in the United States. So uh, all of them just eroded somewhere else on the continent, 10 to 20 kilometers. So the stuff. Well, let's say the the why would that erosion let's be occurring? Hold on. Why would that erosion only be occurring where the mountains are and not everywhere else on the cross the continent at the same time? The particular erosion on so Appalachian yeah. Mountains is take it's you're talking in these grand um, generalities. Let's take a specific. Let's again, this isn't my area of expertise. So let's talk the Appalachians. Well, I mean, right? I just want to the know Appalachians. Why the erosion would only occur like that. Where there's my mountains. argument, my exact argument is that your generalization is where you're having the problem here. You're, you're saying generalizing that, the entire continent. You're as saying that heavy erosion due to rain and wind only occurs roughly where the mountains are and the weather patterns that don't roll across the whole continent and affect the entire continent so much so no that i'm not saying that. right is only going to occur where there's mountains <laughs> the the fact I, i'm not saying really that the fact that you on. think i am i think shows that you will only listen to your opinions on what i say i'm not saying those words yeah, come on you, you are know taking my silly. phrases in that way you know that's silly come on that I didn't say what I didn't say? That's silly. No, that what you're portending to believe. Come on, you know you don't believe that crap. Oh, I don't. Oh, I'm no. sorry. I was I was confused about what you I believe. Possibly believe that the weathering of you're rocks changing the subject. Now, ten, now you're not. You, ten, ten to twenty kilometers of continental materials only now, gonna you, you where keep the mountain. Telling me what I believe and then telling me I'm wrong. You are strawmanning me. Or what causes erosion? Of now you're changing the subject away. You yeah. keep diverting what, what, the conversation causes, into something that you think works. What cause, that's not fair, causes, man. What causes continental erosion? It's so, weathering. To go right? back to my original rain conversation, wind. let's that talk rain. erosion. Let's talk the Appalachians. Rain and wind. Is that not what causes continental erosion? Um. All right. So <laughs> I understand down. it's your channel. I completely feel that, man. Right. And you're gonna run the, your channel the way you want to run it. I just want to know. That being said, continental erosion. 
I this you are taking the conversation in places I did not take it. No, it's just you're the same taking the conversation in places I don't feel like having. What, what car? And it? it's also really late in my neck of the woods. Oh. I don't know what, where you live, dude, but it's dark outside, and I was hoping to go to bed like a half hour ago. I, I so. think you 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 see the absurdity of what you're what you're what you're claiming. I know that's a standard go to. Everyone and, actually believes in God. And, we just I sin. believe. I am well aware of that. First, I believe you formed these beliefs in your head as the story needed to be told while we were talking. Well, you that would be a mischaracterization of me. You created this belief system uh, in response to all the evidences I was giving right here and now. You well, that is uh, not what I did, but I guess you're going to believe what you need to believe. I believe that, yeah. So um, this has been a time, <laughs> uh, but I still need to go to bed. It is well, I've been really talking to you nonetheless, and uh, uh, you must have to work tomorrow or something. You got busy things to do, but um, uh, I got training. work and I got a kid. So, teacher, uh, I'm currently in education. Yes. Oh, okay, okay. Well, good. Yeah, it's uh, okay. it sucks. <laughs> <laughs> really well hey well, man look, corona you're, sucks you're, but. well you know be glad you've got a job you know you're being paid for it right no i do like money that is true well be glad i mean there's a lot of people that don't have jobs man i'm, I'm telling you uh it's it's rough i'm blessed myself but i have a job oh, nice. so uh yeah don't don't frown on it too bad man it's it's a blessing just to have a job all right. Well, get yourself some rest, and I uh, hope you have a good weekend. Yeah. Uh, um, I look forward to butting heads with you again. Night. Make make them pay you more if they're going to make you grade papers at ten thirty at night, or pick a better time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Have a good yeah. weekend. Yep. Take care. Okay. Bye.